What is going on, my Houston Texans family? We are T-minus four days away from the NFL draft. I am super excited. No one knows what the Houston Texans are going to do. So we are going to be doing a three-round mock draft for you guys. If you are going to the Houston Texans draft party, me and the lead will be there. Let us know so we could all get together, have a great time, and see whoever the hell the Houston Texans are going to be drafting. So here we are with the number two pick, and I'm pretty much sold that CJ Shot is going to be a Houston Texan, right? Shot put a stamp on his college tenure in a big way with the second highest graded game of his career against Georgia in the college football playoffs. He has the accuracy and anticipation to thrive in the NFL. I had to go back and rewatch that Georgia game and CJ Shroud, all the stuff that we love to praise Bryce Young for, of uh, you know, creating in the pocket when stuff breaks down. CJ Shroud was doing that and he put on an absolute show. It made me, you know, feel more than comfortable taking CJ Shroud at number two, where he wins his accuracy. Our chart and data would say Stroud is the most accurate quarterback in this class. Almost never misses layups and errs on the safe side with misses. When we go to his pros and cons, he is accurate to every level of the football field. He has a feathery touch, does a beautiful job layering balls over the middle of the field. Quick processor from the pocket with anticipation throws litter all over his tape. CJ Stroud can sling the football, guys. Some of his cons, performances under pressure was rough this season, and that is worrisome considering how big his pockets were in 2022. C.J. Stroud is going to have to answer a lot about whether he can be the guy for the franchise. Does he have that clutch gene factor that remains to be seen? Arm talent is nothing special, and it suffers when he's on the move. Escapability in the pocket is a concern. Doesn't always fill the rush rail. C.J. Stroud, whenever your name is announced, you are going to have the city of Houston behind you and this is how you expected the rebuild to go for the houston texans right you started with oh you see that b john's there at a hey, that's what got me you know a little bit excited but you start the rebuild with d'amico ryan's and cj Sheldon at pick 12 it does get interesting here right you just saw jackson smith and jigba he got picked in the top 10 if B. John falls to 12 for the Houston Texans, man, you definitely have to go ahead and take a look at him. If you want your offense to be exciting, explosive, why not do this? Robinson has such an uncanny ability to stop and start for a 220-pounder. And when he is at top speed, good luck trying to tackle him. Robinson said the PFF college record with 104 broken tackles in 2022. Where he wins is completeness. Robinson has answers for everything. He can run with power, speed, or elusiveness. He set the PFF single season broken tackle record this past fall with 104. What is his role? Feature back. Robinson is more than just a bell cow. He's a back that you make the focal point of your offense, whether that's a 15 plus carries a game or scheming up targets as a receiver. You want the ball consistently in his hands where he can improve fumbles. This is the only thing that really moves the needle negatively with Robinson. His six fumbles on 539 carries could stand to get cleaned up. The pros and cons of Bijan. One of the most gifted athletes you'll see at the running back position, capable of making cuts you've seen only from sub 200 pounds back. He's 220. He's like another receiver when split wide open. Some of his cons, he could get a little too dancy at times when the situation calls for lowering the shoulder, suffered back, elbow, shoulder, and neck injuries in three seasons, although all were minor besides the elbow. Raw yardage production is not quite not quite on par with others given his generational talent label. B. John Robinson at 12. If he does fall there, that gets very interesting. Can you imagine the Houston Texans drafting CJ Shroud and B. John Robinson? We're gonna go ahead and do that. You have so many Texans fans excited. You have so many Texans fans scratching their head and thinking, well, what the hell are the Houston Texans doing? And at pick 33. Where do the Houston Texans go? We talked about Edge being very, you know, you know, a big need for the Houston Texans, as is center. But let's look at Felix Anudike Uzama here, Edge from Kansas State. When you look at him first, Uzama is one of the best edge benders in this draft class. He's the type of edge rusher that's going to convert a lot of pressures to sacks because of that. Of his 89 pressures the past two seasons, 21 of those ended up in sacks. 
where he wins is Ben. Ben is one of the most coveted traits for an edge rusher for a reason, being able to consistently get underneath offensive tackles the way Uzama can make a lot of life easier. What is his role? He is an every down edge. His tape this past fall proved you don't want him kicked inside over tackles, but that was already evident with the skill set. He's an edge rusher who could handle an every down workload. You should be able to give it to him. Analysis, right? What are the pros and cons? One of the bendiest defensive linemen in the class, a true edge win. This is the third time we are hearing that this dude can bend on the edge. I love his pass rush and toolbox. He already knows the speed rusher playbook. His first step gives tackles fits. He has the skill to set to be a weapon as a looper on stunts. What are his cons? He is not the high-end athlete who wins at the NFL level, even with his play style. Balance can be an issue, especially when shutting blocks on the ground a good bit. Production suffered mightily when forced into more interior reps this past fall. The Houston Texans' bright spot on edge last year was Jerry Hughes, who was 34. Other than that, it was just inconsistent the whole year. The Houston Texans couldn't get to the quarterback. They couldn't stop the run. Edge is very huge for the Houston Texans. And here at pick 65, they get their center who played with C.J. Stroud in college. Luke Whippler, you are a Houston Texan. Now, he might be on the small side, but he's as advanced a redshirt sophomore offensive lineman as you'll see. He's likely a center only and a darn good one after owning overall grades of an 82.4 and a 79.6 in two seasons as a starter where he wins leverage, right? Rippler understands line of scrimmage play. He's so good at establishing and reestablishing leverage. His game is what you would expect from a fifth or sixth year player. What is his role? Center. Rippler doesn't have an idle frame to move to guard. He is going to be a center at the next level where he can improve his anchor. That isn't too surprising considering he's a 30-year player declaring early. One can expect this to improve in the coming years, but it'll likely still be an issue early on in his NFL career. The only need on this Houston Texans offensive line is center. You just made Lermit Tunso the highest paid. You are expecting a better year from Kenyon Green in year two. You traded for Shaq Mason, who only allowed one sack last year. And Titus Howard is entering into his contract year. Luke Whippler is the final piece in this offensive line. And dare I say, if they can get their stuff together... We have a potential top 15 offensive line here, ladies and gentlemen. And the last pick in pick seven and three, Nathaniel Dell, you are a Houston Texan. You draft someone from the age. You draft someone who's already met with the Houston Texans multiple times. Dell size five foot 10, 165 pounds won't be for everyone, but he's an easy separator with another gear to stride away from defenders. He had a monster 200, I'm sorry, 2022 campaign for Houston with 108 catches, 1,399 yards, and 17 scores. I really do think that Daniel Dell ends up being a Houston Texan. He is going to excite the fans. And here in the third round, this is a great spot. Where he wins is suddenness. Dell moves across the field like he's being controlled by a joystick. His ability to stop and start and change direction with no race to gather steps is what wins in the league. Tank Dell being Houston Texan should excite everyone. And I think this draft overall is an A-plus for the Houston Texans. I might not get it here from PFF. We are going to see. But you go C.J. Stroud. You go B. John Robinson, you go Felix Anudike Uzama, you go Luke Whippler, and you go Nathaniel Dell. Five starters right off the bat. Imagine the running game of a Damian Pierce and B. John Robinson. This rebuild starts great for the Houston Texans. Everyone should be excited with this type of mock draft. Let me know what you guys think. As always, go Texans. You guys have a very blessed day.